What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 105 of the Games and Grabs podcast. I'm Sonny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Slightly tired, slightly hungover. Went out with work colleagues for a few beers after work last oh, night. At least it's a five this time. Uh, you what's did, that? You, at least it's a five this time. You didn't drop dead like last week. That's true. Yeah, yeah, at least I'm here this time. But I mean, the last time was, it was ridiculous, to be honest. <laughs> Drinking isn't cool. It's not. It's, it's not, not big. It's not clever. It's, and uh, I, I don't recommend it. Nah. At all. Yeah, I, I didn't bother. <laughs> Uh, no, that's fair. Yeah, cool. I, I understand. Uh, any side effects from the drink? any side effects from the uh, resurrection from the other week? And they were um, no, all good to be honest. Uh, the yeah. resurrection went pretty well, pretty smoothly. Probably it was probably a more successful resurrection than Jesus had. Ah, cool. No, no desire for human flesh, anything like that. Don't eat any brains. Uh, no, I mean I ate my cats, but oh. I thought that was normal. Yeah, well, I mean that is one of the side effects, I guess. That's uh, yeah. We'll, we'll sort it out for next time. It's all good. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, next time I'll probably be, you know, back to fully normal me. Cool. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> so, cool. um, I just want to talk about the last episode. Okay. The one that you did on your own. Oh, yes. Um, It was good. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you. I thought you did a very good job. I enjoyed your rant at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Uh, but I but- need to know is, how how's Sharon getting on? Uh, well, I haven't seen this since then because I've been off for these past couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll let you know next week. Um. But yeah, I just want to say thanks to everyone who listened to that and uh, thanks for the positive feedback because I wasn't sure if I should upload it. I was, I'm in an army, but I was in bother. I was like, oh, is this good? This is not good. But uh, it wasn't good. It's got some good positive feedback. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And rightly so. It was good. You, you sounded very comfortable, even though yeah. you didn't think you would sound comfortable. Oh, thank you. So maybe we should maybe we should have more solo Finn podcasts. Maybe. Maybe. I'll look into it. Hmm. Have a think about I'll it. Have a think. No, yeah. we are, you know, we're we're becoming a podcast network now. There's all sorts going on. There is loads of stuff. We've got the wrestling things. We've got uh, interviews this. and stuff. We've got this. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, yeah just so uh, you know, we can add more. People want to hear more. Sunny and Finn, I'm sure. Yeah, I want to do more stuff on YouTube as well. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we spoke about this over you know the last week and. Uh, well, maybe even more than that, but you know, next year we aim to to do more and expand what we do. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about doing a weekly Sunny versus Finn or live stream or video for YouTube? Yeah, yeah, definitely up for it. I mean, um, I used to enjoy when we did that, and I used to enjoy getting my ass handed to me. <laughs> I mean, there's so many different things that that we can do. I just think you know because we've been doing this for so long, and uh, people are starting to know who the two of us are. Um, I think it's, it would just be good for us to do more stuff. I mean, my role has changed now, so I'm not no longer part of Turnbuckle TV mm. and, and branching out and doing... I'd rather focus more on doing this than doing that. Um, still going to be doing commentary and stuff like that, but I'm now doing that sort of independently uh, instead of through anybody. So, cool. yeah. Fair play. And this is my main focus going forward, doing the podcast and doing uh, the YouTube stuff. Um, just, just making this bigger... Um, than it than it is right now because I feel like I mean I put this on Twitter and I wasn't blowing smoke up our own asses or anything like that <laughs> but I genuinely believe that this this is an underrated podcast I think I agree if more people could listen to it you know if we can get it out to more people then I think people would enjoy it everyone who you know listens to the podcast does tend to enjoy it mm. and you know we're not like normal podcasts I don't think I don't think we no we're I, better. Know, I just I feel like we have a very good quality podcast. <laughs> Yeah, me too. You know, people, as you say, people seem to enjoy it. People do listen, do listen to it, and they come back every week. So, uh, I think if we get ourselves out there more and we get more people listening, I think they'll keep coming back. Hopefully, definitely, I, I think so too. It's just, it's just getting out there. I think uh, you know, if, you know, if you guys do listen to this, you know, any support is, you know, you know, appreciated. Even if it's just a, if, you know, just a simple retweet mm. of the latest episode being out, or a share on Facebook, or anything like that. It's just. Those small things that they really do help us, you know. Um, oh, yeah. Like reviews on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast, all those small things that they help get us out there. So um, we're not asking for much. We don't, you know, want Patreon or any monetary contributions or anything like that. <laughs> all we want is shares. We just yes. want you to share our content and help us reach a, a bigger audience. Absolutely. Notice us, please. Please. <laughs> So yeah, as I said, retweet, anything like that, likes, anything like that. 
um, all helps. Yeah, it's just it's just you know very much appreciated. Yes, very much so. Thank you, guys. Yeah, absolutely. So, Finn, uh, let's start the podcast as we always do. And uh, what have you been playing? Uh, what well, indeed? Um, well, Destiny Two, because of course, can't stop myself. I'm a helpless addict at this point. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you, you well and truly in that black hole of Destiny Two. <laughs> I really am. Um, however, I did get the platinum trophy for Destiny Two. I, you... beat, I beat the Leviathan raid on Prestige, which was oof, that was a thing. Um, so I've been joining these like you can you can pick up, you join these bigger parties using like the Destiny Two uh, app on your phone. Um, right. You just got to scroll through and you'll find someone who's doing the same raid, wants to do the same raid as you, and you join their party. Um, I think it took a few attempts. Like, I think it's like the fourth party I joined. We got there. Um, the first, first, first few, like, oh god, like imagine every stereotype you can think of when it comes to like gaming and gamers. Uh, yeah. Like one, one of each <laughs> in each party. So like you had the you had a little kid who was, wouldn't shut up. You had like the angry American. You had like the drunk guy. And the guy just doesn't stop eating the entire time. He's like constantly <laughs> chewing down the microphone. Like the entire like hour, th- three hours we were there. It's, it's for God's sake. Just eat before, eat after. Just don't, just don't. Uh, what are you eating? <laughs> just yeah. The entire time. Like, oh my God. But, uh, he, was eating, he was eating cheese crisps. That's what he's doing. He's eating <laughs> cheesy poofs, like what's it or something. Like, he's got them all over his hands. Uh, and control, his belly sticking out of his t-shirt. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's the typical gamer guy from South Park. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He's like, oh, man, it's a, you're, you're not helping the stereotype. Come on. Yeah, come on. You've you got to make us gamers at least a little bit cool. Exactly, right? But no, yeah, that just doesn't happen. <laughs> but hey, it was a platinum trophy. So, well, actually, you know, you know how you, you shared a thing recently on Twitter about uh, audience applause and things like that. How yeah. Instead of all the applause, they should do uh, jazz hands because you know people get get a bit scared of claps oh, and things. Oh, for Christ's sake! Uh, yeah. uh, you jazz... know what? Right. I, just, I, can't, I still can't get over that. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Uh, however, this... jazz, jazz hands don't really come across well on podcasts because you can't really see. Yeah. I'm doing jazz hands right now, but you can't see it. Um, so Me I'll come. Too. <laughs> I'll come up with a much better, uh, more soothing sound than the uh, round of applause. Okay. Uh, I think they'll quite like this. So uh, here it is. Black <laughs> <Flat> trophy. <laughs> I think that's a little more calming. The Platinum Trophy <laughs> Clacks. <laughs> that's more calming. The very, the very suggestion of jazz hands is ridiculous. It's so stupid. You can imagine me at a wrestling event and just people going, yeah. <laughs> can you imagine like in Japan where they just clap? Like when they don't like stand up and cheer like, you know, normal crowds do. They like, they stand there and clap in appreciation. Yeah. Can you imagine all, just everyone like <laughs> in the Tokyo Dome or something just like, doing jazz hands like oh when they God. oh great arm drag jazz hands <laughs> just That's silenced so in the in the arena <laughs> just, just give everyone air horns it must be much better <laughs> jesus christ could you imagine that <laughs> one oh, amazing. two three fur, 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 fur. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so good uh, but oh, no man. crown isn't going anyway as a joke so here we go Yay. Yeah. Congratulations on your Destiny 2 Platinum Trophy. That's quite the achievement, to be fair. Uh, yeah, it's, a lot of the trophies are super easy now. Like, um, the ones you get for leveling each character to the maximum is basically gone. You just start a new character, it just gives you the trophy. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Because but, but basically, you don't level up anymore. It's just like, get gear, and that's it. Like, get better gear, and that's basically how you level up. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, with the expansions, because you need to be a certain level to play them, if you've paid for the expansions, they literally give you... Uh, that level, yeah, pretty much. You just like so, everything. Everything starts at seven, level seven fifty, and then the like maximum is uh, nine sixty. I think now, yes, nine right, fifty. Okay. But then you need like special gear to get nine sixty, and then you get bonus like depending on like what just how much experience you got in the season, and yeah, uh, it's complicated, but it works. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, right. That's that. <laughs> Other than that, I've been playing um, a lot of Death Stranding, which came out recently. Yeah, about. let's talk about Death Stranding. So we didn't mm. do a podcast last week um, because reasons. Um, <laughs> you were but there. We've had a week to oh, no, do... Not that last week, yeah, sorry. No, that was the week before. Yeah. Um, so we've had a week to play it and, you know, ingest it. And what do you think to it? I like it. 
I like it a lot. Um, it's very, very Kojima, like unfiltered Kojima. Yeah. So no, con- there's no like Konami filter. Um, yeah, it, I, like I wasn't sure at first, like when I saw the trailers and things, but like the week leading up to, well, like weeks leading up to uh, the release, I'm like, oh yeah, it's actually, mm, it might be interesting actually. I was just, I was just like curious. I didn't know what the hell it was, and like when I started seeing gameplay and like reviews and things, I'm like, you know what, it's all right. It's all right. I'm like this. It's like a, mm-hmm. a free roaming. Well, it's like a calming sort of game, except when you, when there's BTs and it's less calming. Uh, <laughs> and it's, 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 the ones it's hard to describe. It's like it's just so weird. And nothing else really like it, but I really enjoy it. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, um, it's it's a weird game to describe to somebody because <laughs> like somebody asked me the other day um, what I thought of Death Stranding and <laughs> what kind of game I could compare it to, <laughs> and all I could say to him is uh, being a real life postman in. After the apocalypse, yeah, pretty much. I was a weird apocalypse, and but um, and... I've been playing. I mean, I had no interest in this game at all. Um, I thought it was going to be very arty. Um, the is. trailers didn't give me any, give, didn't give me any sort of indication as to what the game actually was, and I just, I just generally didn't care for a. Uh, I just didn't care for it. I just wasn't interested at all. That's fine. Um, and then I played it. And now I can't stop playing it. <laughs> it's addictive, I just it? think it's um, it's very relaxing. I love um, I, I love the the world that it's set in. Mm. Uh, I think it's first of all, it's a beautiful game. Oh yeah, so good. And I, I like the gameplay. Um, I just I like everything about it. I like the story, as confusing as it is. You know, I'm you know. You, if you play it and pay attention to it, it honestly, it really isn't. The, the actual premise of the game isn't that difficult. You're trying to reconnect America and yeah, that is it. You, America's <laughs> fucked and you're trying to reconnect it and make it not fucked. Pretty much. That's correct to put it. Unfucked and Americans. So you play as um, Sam, played by Norman Reedus from The Walking Dead mm. and he is a courier. Um that that is, that is his job basically, but um, I'm not I'm not going to spoil it because you know a lot of people are going to play it, and pr- probably a lot of people that listen to this podcast have already played it. But I still don't want to spoil it. No. Um, but Norman Reedus plays the main character, and you carry out different sort of uh, delivery quests in your mission to reconnect America, and that sounds boring as shit. But <laughs> it isn't. It's very relaxing. And it's just a very non-stressful experience that has story built in around it. Yeah, it's a great story too. Like I wouldn't, yeah, I wasn't sure. As I said, I wasn't sure at first, but it makes a surprising amount of sense once you like does, get yeah. into it. But yeah, it's yeah, I'm enjoying it. That's like that's some of the best sound effects as well in games. Like just listening to sitting there listening to the rain, like waiting for the rain to stop, and just sitting yeah. there and like a, and like a, I don't know, like a cliff or something. Like, man. It's a very it's a very <laughs> it's soothing very experience. I mean, you mentioned the BTs and the BT areas, mm. but it's not over. I don't find it overwhelming. No, no. Um, yeah, it can be it can be a bit creepy at times. Uh, I was walk, I was like sneak through this little building, BTs everywhere. And suddenly they saw me, like running, I ran for it, and there's like this, this whole thing happened. I went spoiled it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I freaked me out a little bit, but in a good way. Yeah, you, you I mean, can go from being just, super it's, calming. It's a crazy game. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I like it. I just like how it can go from super calming and chill to, oh my god, run! Everything's bad. <laughs> run for yeah. your life. Um, but then you know, a few seconds later, it's back to soothing and everything's fine again. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, we're not doing a very good job of explaining it. It must be said, but it is one of those games that it is very difficult to explain, and that's, um, it's it looks more complicated than it really is. Yeah, it really is. It's like it's very simple to get into, very simple to pick and play. But it's one of those games you either love or hate. It's like you either love the story and the setting and everything, or you hate the gameplay, which is boring and you don't get it. Which is fair enough. It's one of these Marmite games. Yeah. I mean, the, the trek to and from places can be quite long, but yeah. if they break it up by playing really lovely, soothing music. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it's just like a song will break out, and, you know, and they do it at perfect times as well. Like the camera will zoom out, it'll focus on like the, the gorgeous scenery that the, the game has. And the song will start playing, and it's it just feels perfect, you know. It does. I agree. Yeah, just the atmosphere and just everything it goes all goes really well together. And Norman Reedus, it does. I've got the actors and everything like that. Norman Reedus is all all great in it as well. Oh, I think everybody does a really good job. I mean, there's, there's not one person 
uh, that I've come across that I've thought they they suck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're all good. It, it's all very, it's all perfectly put together. Yeah. And Kojima is obviously a perfectionist, and you can definitely tell that it is a Kojima game. There are very sort of uh, similar menu designs to Metal Gear Solid Five, I think, um, in the way that you accept quests and stuff like that. Yeah, did you see the very uh, Metal Gear Solid style game over um, on the screen behind Redis when the game starts? <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't actually. No, <laughs> it's like it's one of the opening cutscenes, like, and then we just sit oh, there yes, in the safe room. Actually, yeah, yeah, it's like game over. It's like, Haha, I see what we did there. <laughs> but it's 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 a very very good game i mean you have like a hub world like you do in metal gear solid well, i say hub world it's not much of a hub world like in metal gear solid 5 um snake would sit in a helicopter and you would pick your sort of missions and stuff from there hmm. and this you sit in like a, a private room um, where all of your stuff is where you recharge your batteries and um when i say that i mean like your health bar and bb and all that sort of stuff but um i think it's a game that is very much uh, a beautiful piece of art. It's the only way I can describe it. Yeah, it really is. It won't be for everybody. Um, but, you know, if you have a PS4, um, I feel like this is one of those games you have to play. This is one of those games that comes along once once in a generation, maybe. Yeah, exactly. It's very yeah. unique. It's very different to anything else that's available on any console or pc or anything at the minute i would say and i just think it's one of those games you have to play to really judge it you know don't read the negativity on the internet surrounding it because those people haven't played it <laughs> exactly it's like you have to play it for yourself to really understand what it is and to really sort of appreciate the 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 art that's been made here yeah, maybe you'll we'll play it, maybe you'll we'll hate it, and, you know, it's, it's just fine. At least, at least you tried it, at least you know, Course, yeah. it's not for everyone. Um, the other thing I like, really like as well is, like, the uh, the online uh, stuff, like, like you can uh, use other people's structures. Yeah. Uh, you find around me, around, around the world, it's really cool. Uh, it, feels, it, makes, it makes the world feel less empty. It does, yeah, and it really helps as well, you know? Like, yeah, it, yeah. But you feel like you're doing your bit as well. Exactly, yeah. So it's, it's a really well-connected game, and... It's just, it's really, really great. Like, if you, even if you're going to wait for it to sort of come down in price or whatever, do that. But um, just play it. It's, it's really good. Judge it for yourself, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Yeah, it's cool seeing like something pop up, pop up in the corner saying, "So and so used your whatever." Like, oh yeah, someone used my thing. Yeah, yeah. like just simple things like somebody liking the stuff that you've put out there. It's out there. You know, Feels it's good. it's very cool but very satisfying, and uh, I'm very happy that I didn't bypass it. Good. Good stuff. Also, you can take a Wii whenever you want. It's great. I haven't done that yet. I know there's a trophy for it, but I haven't done it. All oh, right, you should. Great. I know. I just want the trophy, to be <laughs> honest. Norman Reedus, more like Norman the Weedus, because he can. He just takes a Wii. <clears throat> so, uh, what have you been playing, Tony? Tony, oh, it's gone again. Damn. <sighs> <laughs> Couldn't resist. Sorry. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Death Stranding. Uh, that we've just talked about, of course. I've been, tr- I'm, uh, so I set myself some goals, some gaming goals to get through uh, some games that I really wanted to get through that I was excited about but never finished. So one of those is Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three, and uh-huh. I'm making my way through that at the minute on Switch. Cool. Uh, and then when I play it on the TV, it makes me realise how horrible that game is in hand. Oh, <laughs> um, there's too much going on uh, yeah. for it to, to for it to be plausible in handheld. That's fair. Uh, I love the handheld um, stuff on Switch. I think it's great. I love that feature. But some games, there's just too much going on. There's too much writing on the screen. And oh, yeah. you need to play it on a TV. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is one of those games. Uh, I really like it. It's funny. It's it's Marvel Ultimate Alliance it's gameplay. Exactly the same as 1 and 2. Um, but it's, it's a very well put together game. Really good selection of Marvel heroes. Uh, it's very well written. It's, a, it's, it's funny. Cool. And I'm I'm really enjoying it, and so I'm getting through that. Uh, I'm one badge away from um, I'm, I've got one gym badge left on Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu to get. Oh, nice! And then I can move on and hope finish the game. I don't think I'm that far away now. Cool. And so they're the two I'm trying to get finished while I'm playing Death Stranding, um, and that's pretty much all I've been playing. I mean, K brought me a uh, gave me an early birthday present in a Mega Drive Mini. Oh, nice! 
That's awesome. Uh, so we've been playing that. We've been playing a little bit of... Uh, we played some Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine Ooh. against each other and Columns. Oh, yeah. Nice. Classic and, puzzle games. Yeah, I played... You know, the first game I played on it was Sonic 1. Cool. Because cool, of course. Classic. that's the first game I ever had yeah, when I was a little person. Me too. So I played Sonic 1, and it's still still great now. It's a really cool package. The Mega Drive Mini is really, really good. I think it's probably the best out of all of the mini consoles. Yeah, look, I mean, it looks it. Uh, it's only got, um, like, massive selection of games. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's 42 games on there. It's crazy. Wow, insane. And it's, it's a great selection as well, and it has the games that I played when I was a kid. So, I mean, it even has Street Fighter 2 Championship, Championship Edition, which is what the one I had when I was a kid. And, wow. Um, you know, it's got Comic Zone, Sonic 1 and 2, which are my personal favorite ones. Um, Sonic Spinball, which, by the way, is so fucking hard. <laughs> it is hard. But good. I like, like, I like del- that game. It's, it's okay. I mean, it's a little bit... But it's brutal. Like, old games are brutal. Once If you die and lose all your lives, that's it. Fucking start again. <laughs> this is, yeah, it's a lot like uh, the Aladdin and Lion King stuff I'm playing. I played last week. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's a lot harder than I remember. Yeah, it's brutal. Like, oh, what's that? You've lost. You've got so far in the game, but lost all your lives. Well, fuck you. You've got no continues, and you can start this game again. <laughs> yeah, it's like Sucks ah, to be you. Okay, cheers. <laughs> I guess. But you know, I love I love the old games, and they really stand up even now. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I've play, been playing Comic Zone, and it's just so good. Oh, it's so good. That game's really hard as well. I seem to remember. Oh, it's really hard, but it's good. Yeah, yeah. Great yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to introduce Kay to uh, Streets of Rage 2. Nice, good plan. And Golden Axe, because, you know, they're just cool, fun games that you can play together. Yeah, really are. It's like good, good classic co-op action, like arcade action. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're nice and easy to play. I mean, three buttons, that's all you need. Exactly. It just shows how simple and fun gaming can really be. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing, to be honest. My, my, my main focus has been Death Stranding, and I've just been, uh, I, you know, the first couple of, couple of days I was playing it, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And I, that's a good mm. thing for a game, for sure. Oh, but, yeah, um, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking Star Wars out. Um, it's getting really good reviews, and that excites me a lot. It's You know, people are saying it's a combination of Uncharted and a bit of Prince of Persia, as well as sort of combat that's very similar to Dark Souls and Sekiro and stuff like that. So, um it sounds like Respawn has done an amazing job on it, and I can't wait to try it out. Cool. Yeah, it looks good. I'm not a Star Wars guy myself, but it does look fun, from what I've seen. And uh, yeah. yeah, maybe it's on, once it's on sale, I might give it a try. Yeah, d- yeah, I, I think you definitely should. I mean, um, it just looks it looks great. Cool. Respawn uh, are too good for EA. <laughs> yeah, they really are. Yeah, EA don't deserve Respawn. Not at all. <laughs> cool. But, so yeah, that's all I've been playing, really. Excellent. Right, so... Bet wise, um, you're not doing super well right now. The, the score is eight four to me. So, it's, it pretty much if we, if we rely on bets, it pretty much makes it impossible for it to catch up. So, oh, really, uh, yeah. So, I have, I have an idea. Uh, each week to help you catch up, I'm going to ask you a bonus uh, video game or wrestling related question. Which, if you get Ooh. right, will give you a bonus point. Do you help? Uh, oh, okay. This sounds uh, this, this sounds good. A challenge accepted. Sweet. Okay. So here's a question for this week. Okay. Uh, a few weeks ago, we were talking about games with tacked on multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, so, a uh, list of games here. You have to tell me which one of these games did not have tacked on multiplayer. Ten- okay. I would add some tension music, but I forgot to download some tension music. So, next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, the games are Alien vs. Predator for 360 and PS3. Okay. Tomb Raider, the reboot, the first one. Okay. Wolfenstein, the New Order, again, the reboot. Yeah. Uh, Dead Space 2. Uh-huh. Max Payne 3. Yeah. Metroid Prime 2. Okay. Spec Ops The Line. Yeah. Condemned 2. Or I've written here, Condemned 2. <laughs> <laughs> that one spell. Or Fear 2. A lot of sequels. Which one doesn't have tact on multiplayer? There's only one, is there? Uh, yeah. All but one. Seriously, there's only one out of all of them? Uh, yeah, just the one. Jesus, yeah. um, tacked on multiplayer. Um, I want to say Tomb Raider because I don't okay. recall seeing multiplayer on the on the menu. Okay, I'm going to say Tomb Raider. All right, is that final answer. Yeah, cool. I can tell you that Tomb Raider does have multiplayer. Does it? It does indeed. 
So Jesus, is, it, is, it, is it Dead Space 2? Uh, nope, Dead Space 2 had multiplayer as well. What? I know. I remember 3 having it. <laughs> yeah. Dead Space 2, Dead Space 2 multiplayer was a bit weird. I think one of you controlled like the alien and one of you controlled... Actually, no, I think it was... I can't remember actually, to be honest. It's weird. I remember being weird. I remember Alien vs. Predator definitely had it because yeah. it was rubbish. <laughs> yeah, that's so bad. To be fair, most um, of these multiplayers were rubbish. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, was it... Uh, it makes me think now that it was Wolfenstein. Uh, it was. It was Wolfenstein. Yeah, huh. See, I thought Wolfenstein did for some reason. Yeah, and the classic Wolfenstein games were known for the multiplayer. And the shitty reboot that was on uh, 360 and PS3 had um, uh, multiplayer, but sent a new one. Ah. And they, they cut it out. I played through that as well. It was really good. Yeah, really good. It's... Yeah, right. So I'm wrong. So there we go. So yeah, uh, no point for you. That, that's one challenge failed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, I went too early. I couldn't find the button. <laughs> so what was the what was the multiplayer in Tomb Raider? Uh, it was just like generic team deathmatch, pretty much, kind of like Uncharted. The, the Tomb Raider what? reboot. Yeah. Jesus. You don't, you don't need the first one. Ah, they, the other two didn't they didn't bother because the first one was garbage. Um. Wow, I, I had no idea. Fair enough. Yeah, well, I'm actually the memory of it. So much yeah. interest that I had in the multiplayer for for, for that game. Yeah, seriously. great game by the way. The first one, awesome. Yeah, really good. But, uh yeah, all these games like you wouldn't have thought had more, had, would have would have more to play because they're mostly known for the single player. It's uh, yeah, at least Tomb Raider. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Right. No point for you. God, it makes you realise <laughs> how many games do have shitty tacks on multiplayer. Holy yeah. shit. It's less less so these days, but back 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 then, it's like everyone had it, you couldn't escape it. What was it on Dead Space? Was that like Team Deathmatch and stuff as well? I don't remember. To be honest, let's look into it. Either way, it shouldn't have had tacked on multiplayer. Oh, no. Definitely not. Stupid. I have Dead Space 2, actually. I'll have a look. Yeah, I'll get it somewhere. Cool. Cool. Right, and that's that. Cool, yeah. Um, so uh, some... I, I'm, glad, I, I'm excited by this every week now, but I feel yeah. like I'm going to have to sort of prepare. <laughs> yeah, to get yourself in the right mindset. Yeah, definitely. Research. Yeah, I feel like I need to be like laser focused to <laughs> be able to, to, to claw, claw it back. Yes. Cool. Mm. Uh, cool. Get some gaming news. There's been a whole lot of gaming news this week. Um, let's have a quick look. Oh, new Sonic trailer. That looks awesome. They, it does look good. They you know what? It. it does look good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Everyone's been a lot more positive about it. I don't know what they were thinking with the first Sonic. It's like, uh, what were you? Why would you think this is a good idea? No, so but the, even the film looks better. It does. So the trade is better. The Sonic looks amazing. Yeah, it's, we, they've fixed we got, it. We got to see Green Hill Zone, which looks awesome. Yeah, it does. Well, uh, yeah, this you. just looks a lot of fun. It does. I don't watch movies that often, but I will be watching this because it's Sonic. Yeah. Love Sonic. Who didn't love Sonic? We'll go together and we'll do a review podcast. Cool. That's good to me. There we go. It's a date. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Comes out on Valentine's Day as well, actually. I did it. Oh, <laughs> nice. Chances are I won't be going on Valentine's Day, though. That's fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah, not a whole lot else going on, I don't think. Um. Um. Uh, well, well, Microsoft had their conference this week. Oh, yeah. Did, did, and, did much happen? Um, <laughs> Yakuza's it. coming to Xbox. Oh, nice. That's cool. Um, yeah, so Yakuza 0, Kiwami, and Kiwami 2, all going to be on Xbox and all going to be on Game Pass. Nice. So that's cool for Xbox players. If you've never played Yakuza, you definitely should. It's cool and very long and absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yes, I, I plan on streaming uh, Yakuza 0 sometime soon. Excellent. Um, but yeah, I don't think there was a whole lot else. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that's coming to Game Pass, um, yeah. but they didn't really reveal anything uh, to do with the next Xbox console. I think I'll probably save that for E3 next year because obviously the consoles are going to come out fall next year. Yeah, that makes um, sense. They showed Project X Cloud. Oh, uh, yeah. I know which what, what is that? streaming thing, oh, which has basically thing. killed Stadia already. <laughs> Rip. Yeah. And. Um, they the one big thing to come out of that I say big thing it's not really a big thing um, was the hint well the, but basically they confirmed that you'll be able to use a DualShock oh right interesting those are on the Xbox thing or gives it Microsoft yeah. thing over Xbox but still yeah interesting so does that mean we see um, the potential of this xCloud being playable on PlayStation consoles hmm that'd be weird but what do you think that oh, yeah it'd be, it'd be cool I mean that would kill my that would kill Xbox as a console. I think. Yeah, maybe it certainly killed um, Sony's uh, thing. I don't remember the name of PlayStation Now. That's the one. <laughs> which, which, by the way, is getting a lot better. Um, I think they've realised that they had to step the game up with that. Yeah, yeah. 
I think they they lowered the price, didn't they? Before it was like stupidly expensive. Yeah, and they've put they've put good games on there now as well. It helps. So I mean, you, you had God of War on there, and they're adding more all the time. And there's a really great range of PS3 games you can play on there as well. Um, it's a really good library, actually. I think it's very, very good. I don't think it's as good as Game Pass yet. I think people are probably killing themselves if they think it is. Um, but um, what's cool is you can download the, the PS4 games. Yeah, awesome. So you can't do it with the PS3 games, which is a shame, but I understand that the hardware uh, just just won't allow for it. Yeah. Cool. So, um, Not good to me. Yeah. Um, so that that's that, that's going to be interesting to see how that develops, uh, especially with the you know being able to use the Dual Shock and all that sort of stuff, and whether it does uh, mean that we're going to get X Cloud on PlayStation consoles or whatever. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, very cool. Um, Absolutely, my friend. Yeah, so Pokemon reviews are in. Um, they are sealed. Look very good. A lot of very positive. Yeah, but there are certain section um, of of fans uh, that are raging about it for whatever reason. Um, like when it doesn't look as good as it did on trailers, the animations aren't good on many Pokemon that it should be. Apparently, it can't be that bad. Everyone's loving it so far. Gamespot gave it a nine out of ten. Then uh, IGN gave it a nine. Like, yeah, it looks good to me. It's like Pokemon. People are never happy, Finn. We know this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fans, yeah, so, fans, hashtag, like, well, quote unquote, fans, and I started hashtags calling Game Freak liars. Saying, oh, the lies, the lies, just la la. They didn't. Sake, I know. Um, people are stupid. Yeah, it's like if getting that, so worked that, up. That section of people are stupid. Yeah. It's getting so worked up over a game about collecting, like collecting and fighting magic cartoon monsters. You, you need help. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that, that's it. That, that, that's that's the long and the short of it, isn't it? You need help because. Yeah. yeah. But the number one trend the other day uh, was Game Freak lied. Oh, for God's sake! And it's like, come on! And then all the reviews come out, and it's really good. And <laughs> <sighs> bloody weirdos! You know, people, people think I'm, I'm a weirdo. I know, <laughs> like people think I'm a weirdo because I don't get how much and I like video games, Sharon. But compared to these dweebs, I'm a freaking sex god. Like, bloody hell. Who are these people? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Um, I don't want to get it. I, I don't get it. I don't get why people get so worked up about these things. I, I really don't. It doesn't make any sense to me. But, hey. Well, I mean. <laughs> people suck. People are weird. Yeah, they, they are weird. Yeah, so you, I agree completely. But, yeah. um, it looks great. I'm looking forward to playing it. I'm going to finish Let's Go first before I um, entertain getting it. It's my birthday next week, so hopefully, um, you know, the birthday birthday Santa will bring it for me. <laughs> birthday Santa. This is cool. I think that's about it for video games. Yeah, um, pretty much, yeah. Cool. So, wrestling. Wrestling! So, we did some predictions for Crown Jewel. It feels like forever ago now. Yeah. Um, pretty much, long or short of it is, we got most of them wrong. Um, <laughs> Mansour with Cesaro both got right because it's pretty obvious who's going to win uh, Team Morgan won which you both said uh, so basically it all came down to Strowman versus Titan Fury uh, I did Strowman no you said Strowman I did Fury I saw I won the point there and that means I get another point out of the total so the score now is 9-4 to me oof Jesus I need to like get every question right in the you next do. few weeks to have a hope in hell's chance what are we doing we're going to the end of the year uh, yeah, I think so. Go to the end of the year and then start fresh. Maybe, maybe if you do yeah, that. Is... So I'm going to say, what? if you if if do do that, yeah, Sunny vs. Thing thing, Sunny vs. Finn thing, I was to say, uh, every week, maybe start adding that to the total of the uh, the bets. Maybe, maybe mean a bit more. And yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. Be more of a running Yeah, that, that sounds good. Yeah, cool. There's so That'd many different things we could do. We're up for suggestions as well, guys. If, like, if you guys uh, listening want to see us do certain things you know within reason obviously um, <laughs> yeah gaming wise or predictions wise or anything like that then um yeah you know just let us know on twitter at games and graps or on facebook if you follow our facebook page which has picked up a, a load of new followers recently so really cool. appreciate that as well excellent uh so yeah things are going things are going well for us and we just want to build and do more stuff to keep you guys entertained keep yes. coming back excellent sounds good to me look forward to it absolutely cool so Let's go for it walk with Lee. It was... Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was shit this week, to be honest. Yeah, it wasn't great. Um, Boris and Kara lost again. Worst, worst war ever. God damn it. Yeah, he's, uh, he's asked for his release as well. Whether he gets yes. it or not is another thing, because WWE aren't releasing people at the minute. But um, is Sin Cara that big of a loss to WWE? Yes. Yes, but Obviously. also probably not at the same time. Ooh. He'll be, he'll be in AEW. He'll be AEW champ by the end of, what, end of the month. 
The thing guessing. is, though, WWE owned the Sin Cara license because obviously Sin Cara was uh, Mystico before, mm. and then Mystico just didn't work in WWE. Uh, so Hunico shit. became Sin Cara. <laughs> um, so, so if the Sin Cara does get released, they'll just they could just get someone else to play Sin Cara, probably. Yes, <laughs> true actually, yeah. So because WWE own that, they yeah. don't own the wrestler. I mean, they could let Hunico go, and then someone else could just be Sin Cara. Yeah, put one well, in the mask. There you go, Look, Sin Cara, everybody. He's going a few feet. Since last time we saw him, <laughs> <laughs> he's bulked up a little bit, but he's still not as hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we also had uh, uh, Imperium on the board, which is pretty cool. Until Seth made Walter look like a a chump, <laughs> pretty much. It's because Seth Rollins is going to make Seth Rollins look strong. Yeah, Thankfully. I thought Imperium uh, looked strong though. I did. I thought they. I thought that match was really good. It was pretty good, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Imperium came in at the end, and, it, and you know, it was ended by disqualification. I think it's a way it should have gone. Um, I think. So. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I, just, I just wish uh, Walter looked stronger. Yeah, uh, I get that, but the thing the thing with it is, and what I'm sort of understanding with it is that you have to make all three brands look strong going into Survivor Series. That's fair. Because, I mean, NXT ran roughshod over Raw around SmackDown that first week of the invasion. True. Um, so you have to, you have to, it has to balance out because otherwise NXT look way too strong. True, true enough. Um, and of course, uh, Seth Owens and Street Profits beat Imperium uh, all together, which is fine. But I'm glad Walter wasn't the one that took the pin. Yeah, that's true. And I could see Kevin Owens doing something as well. He's just been being absent his past few weeks. Um, can I can I uh, put a prediction out there for a point? Sure. I think Kevin Owens turns and joins NXT. Oh, another heel turn for Kevin Owens? Not a heel turn. I just think he joins NXT. Oh. I think, I think he turns on Raw um, during the Survivor Series match and uh, joins NXT. I would very much like that. I would like that a lot. I just see I just see it going that way. Yeah. What the fuck else is he doing? That's uh, true, yeah. He did, did all the stuff on SmackDown, finally got with the Sherman Man, and then got moved to Wall. It's like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, that was all for nothing. No sense at all. Yeah. So I think I think a move to NXT would be really cool. Yeah, I agree. But the story there as well. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please and thank you. Uh, cool. So that was that. I always had the bloody Lana Rusev thing, which skipped. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah. It's cringeworthy, awful um, television that just shouldn't be. It has no place. In today's wrestling, it's just—it's terrible. It's stupid. It's it's getting like the casual fans, like the people who watch like I don't know, like Love Island and crap like that. It's like, oh look, we have we have you know all these cool storylines with you know babies and Lana and cheating and stuff. Mm. It's like no, no one cares. It makes me um, hearing the word sex on TV <laughs> uh, on on Raw makes me cringe because um, you know back in the Attitude Era when we were teenagers, you know you thought that shit was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> but uh, when I hear it now. I just, I just crawl inside myself. It just makes me cringe so much. Yeah, this... there are little kids there who are there to see, you know, their heroes. Uh, they're there to, you know, they don't need to hear that Lana is having sex with, um, with <laughs> Lashley, and then yeah. but and then Rusev. It just, it's that's not for kids. It's stupid. Like the main roster is mainly for children. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's that's the audience that they're aiming at. You know. Um, I just think um, it's it's tasteless. Um, I think it's probably uncomfortable for all parties involved because Lana and Rusev are very much married and, you know, very much a happy couple. Yes. And, you know, if you're going to have stuff like Total Divas and things Divas. like that that are trying to depict, quote, unquote, reality, mm. like, it, it just doesn't... The two don't blend because you can't make out that, you know, Lana and Rusev are going through... a you know, a split or whatever, and then have them depicted as a happy couple on Total Divas. I, I've not watched Total Divas in ages. I'm assuming that Lana's still on it. I don't know. But, Shug. you know, it, we know, you know, these kind of things don't work now because there's too much real life stuff. Exactly, yeah. There's too much, yeah, like on Twitter and stuff, we see like... Exactly, exactly yeah. There's too much of a presence in the real world for, for everyone now. Like back in the day, like when Ric Flair... When you genuinely thought Ric Flair could have been nobbing Miss Elizabeth, because <laughs> yeah. you know, when these Photoshop photos and all that sort of stuff look very convincing, and you know, you think, "Oh God, I can't believe Elizabeth's doing that to Macho Man," but she wasn't. <laughs> but you believed it because 
it wasn't the stuff wasn't plastered everywhere. Yeah, exactly. It's you can't do this kind of storyline these days. Uh, one because it sucks, two because it's distasteful, and three because it sucks, and four because uh, it still sucks, and then five because it's it, it it just it isn't for today's it isn't for children. No, it's it's dumb. It just makes you it's it's weird. It weirds me out. This yeah, it's having yeah, it weirds and, me out. It's dumb as fuck. Yeah, gross. Um, what else? We've got Eric Rowan carrying around a, a bag like a burlap sack and talking yeah. to it. That's weird. That's well, I mean, it gives Rowan something to do, and then it is you know kind of intriguing, I guess. But you know, it's going to be something stupid when it gets revealed. It would definitely be something stupid. It'd probably be fucking Gizmo from Gremlins or something. <laughs> Because that's that's how stupid they want to treat us. Yeah, they want to give us like they want to give us a real life sex scandal, and then at the same time, Eric Rowan's carrying around something that um probably might turn out to be nothing, and he's talking to nothing because he's a lunatic or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. Um, that's fine. We had uh, Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster show up, which is cool. Yep, and, and a good match as well against the uh, the Viking experience Raiders. Yeah, or well, Viking Radio. People. Yeah. Raiders experience. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's decent. I liked it. Who, who aren't over whatsoever, by the way. WWE have killed them already. Uh, yeah. It's just like... Uh, the, Viking, the, Viking Raiders, by the way, not Flash yeah, Morgan yeah. Webster and Andrews. Yeah, they're, they're great on NXT. People love them. It's got to change the name because like, the War Raiders was cool. They can chant war along with the Andrews music. You take that away yep. and I was just like, uh, Raiders, Raiders, Vikings <laughs> experience. Yeah, it, doesn't, it just doesn't work at all. <laughs> and then... Um, what also doesn't help is you have them killing jobbers every week and yeah. as the tag team champions that shouldn't be happening that was cool in the 90s when you know you had superstars and that was you didn't have the weekly tv that you had now like back before raw started you had superstars and squash ma- enhancement matches were fine yeah but if you're the tag team champions in 2019 you should be fighting the very best and they're not um it's hard to get excited for a match that you already know the outcome of yeah, sitting out having it on SmackDown this week as well with uh, Heavy Machinery versus two roundos. Stupid. Yeah. It's pointless. I just um, don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. But the main event was pretty cool. Uh, Randy Orton, Ricochet and Humberto versus the OC. Decent match. I liked it. Good, yeah. yeah. Uh, I like Humberto. I don't think the fans are totally feeling him yet. I don't like how they've packaged him and I think they'll change it at some point. Uh, I also think he'll lose his surname soon. Has a Humberto? Hmm. Yeah. Good thing. But have you seen uh, Mustafa Ali got his first name back? I have seen that, actually. Yeah. yeah, weird. I don't get it. I don't understand why. Yeah, very strange. Still. Yeah. <laughs> That's works for me. Yeah, fine. I preferred it. I, you know, Ali sounds shit when the ring it's... announcer's doing it. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Um, so, uh, for him to be called Mustafa Ali again, great. Cool. But yeah, I, I agree. Humberto hasn't really got a whole lot of character to him right now. He's just kind of generic no. baby face. But uh, I think I think they'll change, change it up soon, hopefully. I think so too. I, don't, I think they'll have him speak a lot less. Yeah, the promo he cut when he first was on, on there well, it wasn't great. Not it's fault. not his it's fault. Just... I mean, English isn't his first language. Exactly, yeah, not his fault. It's, so, uh... for, them to, for him to send him out there with a live microphone, <laughs> knowing that he's not all that comfortable speaking English, yeah. um, it, it, it's hard. And I feel sorry for I feel sorry for him a, a little bit because he's now been he's been thrust into this he's been thrust into the main event scene almost instantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. Mm, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I'm I'm hopeful. Oh, I think he'll do well. Um, I just think they need to maybe adjust um, his his gimmick a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that's raw. Pretty pretty rubbish. Pop a few things here and there. Yeah. Um, uh, Baron Corbin. Um, Saying so the last week on SmackDown, Baron Corbin did an awful like ten minute promo at start, calling mm. Roman Reigns. Oh, making fun of Roman Reigns, pulling the small dog, something about testicles. Classic Vince shit promo um, yeah. <laughs> again this week it gets even worse yay um, from Tobias and Corbin brought out like a mascot uh, a dog mascot basically he was Roman mm-hmm. Reigns dressed as Roman Reigns it's like come on <laughs> you know you totally heard the feedback from last week why do it again but make it worse it's like, come on And they dragged um, because the dog people and are ignorant it. to feedback yeah god damn it and they dragged, dragged Paul Ziggler and Rude into the whole thing as well yeah. Ugh, stupid. Ugh. Um, there's just, there seems to be very little direction at the minute. Yeah. Um, with, with some, I mean, you obviously you've got the clear direction of what of the built to Survivor Series, and I'm very excited for Survivor Series. Yeah. I think it's going to be really good. Um, and you know, you've so you've got that clear direction. Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. Cool. Cool. 
But it's the other stuff in between that people don't care about. Yeah. Weird. I mean, like I saying, I like I like Baron Corbin. I like him as King of the Ring. But right now, just giving him garbage. It's like it's not, it's not Corbin's fault. He's just you know doing his job. Yeah. It's like, ugh, it's rubbish. What are you doing? Problem is they, they have to shoehorn Reigns in there. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. But uh, you know, for me, the, the focus should just be Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. I would much rather see uh, Brock versus Adam Cole versus Bray Wyatt in mm. a triple threat match than see Brock versus Rey Mysterio and Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Um, I think they're just, um, you know, all the other titles, uh, you know, have Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. So why can't the main titles have it? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, very strange. Have you seen a new uh, Universal title, by the way? I have. I like it, to be honest. It's the same, but blue. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> it. it makes perfect sense if the Universal title is going to be on SmackDown instead of Raw. Um, I understand it. I just wish they'd make it look different. Like, basically just like a WWE title, but blue. Like, make make it look different and unique. That's what I like. Um, yeah, I get that. I mean, I guess that's why it's got a different colour, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else happened? <laughs> uh, <laughs> New Day Revival rematch. It was fine. Ended by DQ um, when uh, Undisputed Era came in. Which is cool. Cool to see him on SmackDown again. Yep. Um, also, Revival got a good promo, not on TV because, of course, but on like WWE.com. Um, yeah, right. so call- calling out Undisputed Era, basically. I think hopefully I'll have him stand in line because that'd be great. I'm hoping the yeah, revival. Let's see go- that match on SmackDown next week. Yeah, I'm hoping because it sounds like the revival want to go back to NXT. I'm hoping they they go back to NXT and they have match like matches with like guys like Undisputed Era. That'd be awesome. Mm. Yeah. Talking talk about how they built NXT and they were the best tag team in NXT stuff like that. I think so. I think they might show up on NXT this week. I think so. Hopefully, mm, I'll take it. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Um, it, and I know this sounds like an obvious thing to say, but um, seeing the NXT guys on Raw and SmackDown really gives Raw and SmackDown more fresh feel than seeing the same tired faces on there. Yeah, I agree. Like, Undisputed Era turn up, and it's like, oh my god, this is awesome! Look how comfortable they look on this main roster, and look how uh, much of a different feel they bring to the show. Yeah, it's cool. It's, yeah, when, when when it first happened the other week, when I Shayna Baszler came in and beat up um, Bailey, it's like <gasps> Shayna Baszler's on TV. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, and like everyone else came in, it's like, ah, oh, it's so awesome. Yeah, so I mean, I, I really the build to Survivor Series is probably the best in years. Yeah, I agree. Um, do I think some things they like, like the hastily thrown together nonsensical team, like women's team, like Sasha Banks, Nikki Cross, Carmella, Dana Brooke, and whoever else? It's like, <laughs> what? Dana Brooke? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> they got no one else. Yeah, I mean, out. I mean, I had Mandy Rose and Sonny Deville. I was like, I was certain they were going to win because they had a match against. Uh, Danny Brooke and Carmella to decide who was going to be in the team. It's like, surely, yeah. you know, they would win. They, you know, they're getting better for a week. Manny Rose, especially, is getting better for a week. An actual team. An actual yeah. team. But no, beaten by Carmella and Dana Brooke, both of whom are faces and on Sasha Banks' team, who Sasha Banks is a heel, and they're all teamed <laughs> together. On, the, on this episode of SmackDown, Nick, Nikki Cross versus Bailey. If Nikki Cross won, she would be in the team. But ended by DQ, and then all of a sudden, she's, she's ref fighting with Sasha Banks against the NXT guys. Um, yeah, what? It makes no sense. It's stupid. Oh, it's very stupid. Yeah, I I completely agree. <laughs> it's just so bizarre. It would make, yeah. make perfect sense of bloody Maddie Rose and the real on there, but now it's not going to do anything. Ugh, stupid. Yeah, mm-hmm. stupid. I'm very stupid. Yeah. Ah, oh, God, is that, is that that's the kind of nonsense that puts people off watching WWE. <laughs> it really is. Uh, anyway, but, yeah. Oh well. I mean, I'm excited for Survivor Series still, regardless of that nonsense. But I mean, I mean Nakamura versus AJ Styles versus uh, Roderick Strong. Holy shit! Oh yes, yes please. Yeah, all day. Give us that. I'm so excited for it. Oh yeah, me too. And it would have been awesome to have Revival versus um, this bit of versus Heavy Machinery. No Heavy Machinery. Completely <laughs> hell. Viking Raiders. Uh, but then he got rid of um, Revival and put New Day in there. Which is fine. Can't, I like, poss- can't, can't don't, possibly don't. not have New Day on there. Yeah, I guess not. I mean, I don't hate New Day, but it's like, come on, Revival versus Unspeed Era. I mean, so cool. Come on. Yeah, it would have been really cool. That That's the match that all of us wanted. Yeah, but then again, maybe they're saving it for NXT. Maybe they're going to bring that thing bring back down to NXT, and that'd be awesome. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, then we had uh, Miss TV, which is usually rubbish, but on this week we had uh, Danny Ryan talking about Bray Wyatt. I think mm-hmm. Danny Ryan could have a cool little promo. Still being kind of a heel, but also a face at the same time. It's like saying, you're not going to bring back the Yes Movement. Doesn't care about the people. But at the same time, he just want to win the title from Bray Wyatt. 
yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool little uh, back and forth. Yeah, I don't really like how um, thrown together this has been. A little bit. I think they could have built this for TLC or beyond because, um, again, it, in my opinion, they should have had a triple threat with all the champions. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and so to throw Daniel Bryan in a week and a half before Survivor Series, ugh, no, he, and you know he lost clean to Adam Cole, yeah, the NXT champion. So for him to now be challenging the Fiends, who they are trying to make look absolutely invincible, um, it just doesn't seem right to me. Yes, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, today it should, it should, it should, should have saved it. It's a rushing mm-hmm. it a bit. I feel like it's like yeah. Bray White versus Daniel Bryan would be awesome later, of course, but yeah. <laughs> But not now. It, it, it potentially to be a great match, yeah. but um, I don't. I want it to have a better build. Yes, me too. Absolutely. But you know, it, it is what it is, and I, you know, I, I hope they have a great match. I mean, Survivor Series has the potential to just be so good. Oh yeah, it, it could be amazing if given you know given the proper matches, the proper time, uh, and not spend like seven hours on Tyson Banks, Nikki Cross, and Carmella, and then it work. <laughs> it's yeah. a shame because the NXT teams looks awesome, but it's like that seems to make no sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> cool. Uh, that's it's, hard about... to, it's hard to enjoy WWE sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. A shame. Yeah. But NXT is really good. It's consistently good awesome. every week. It's like, so, so good. Yeah, I haven't seen this week yet, so don't spoil it for me. Okay, it was good. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> That'd be good. I mean, I, I thought that probably would be the case anyway. <laughs> um, and AEW. AEW has been good as well these past few weeks. Um. um yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, go on. You carry on. I'll, uh, I'll voice my opinion in a minute. Okay. I'm going to say NXT, I still prefer uh, by quite a mile over AEW. Not to say AEW's yeah. bad by any means, but there are things NXT does a lot better uh, than AEW. For example, the women's division. Um, oh, God. And just, uh, yeah. And just, just like, I don't know, matches in general. And just like build, the building's probably really good. Like building matches and things like that. And I don't know. Storylines, <sighs> everything else. <laughs> Everything is better than AEW. No, um, no. I do like the things well, I, that I, I, like, I, I agree with you. I, I mean, I you know, I I do think that is the case. Yeah, I mean, there are things on AEW that are great. Like and Jericho is great. Uh, MJF got a really cool promo this week. Um, was he turned totally heel? Did the worst power slam of all time. Yeah, oh God, that was bad. Jesus Christ. Um, but MJF well, is yeah. great. The heel turn we could see him all off, but I don't know. He's great. I love MJF as a character, and he's great on you know, he lives the gimmick. <laughs> He does, um, yeah. I'm sure he's a lovely person in real life. Oh, yeah. He does live the gimmick. Yeah, he's great. He's great. I love him. Uh, but yeah, um, NXT all the way. I, I, I like AEW, hmm. but it's not. I, I mean, I, I watched, I watched Full Gear, and mm-hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Yeah, Me but too. I don't think it's any better. Like you know, ignore the main event of Hell in a Cell. Um, you know, and the outcome of it and all that sort of stuff. But Hell in a Cell was a really good show and Full Gear was no better than that. Yeah, I would agree. There are a few things that I just kind of, kind of skipped through in uh, Full Gear. Um, the I'd women's t- division is fucking terrible. I don't care yeah. what anybody says. It's awful. It's pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's a shame because they do have seen some good wrestlers on there, but their storylines are dumb and a lot of the time it's just a, it's the same uh, wrestlers against each other each time and they don't have good chemistry with each other. It's just, yeah. I just, cool. I don't, I, I understand... You know, Kenny Omega obviously spent a lot of time in Japan and he's worked with a lot of these uh, a lot of these women and that's cool. But mm. I don't think it I, I'm not knocking them because you know they you know, I think Riho is, is a talented a talented women's wrestler. Oh yeah. But I just don't think that, you know, those matches translate very well to an American audience. No, I agree. Like I thought Riho versus Emi Sakura, I thought it was horrible. I, I thought it was I, I just didn't. I just don't care. You, you're not giving me any reason to care. I mean, I thought Britt Baker versus B Priestley was horrible as well. Yeah. Nothing is clicking in that women's division, and it's just. I just, and then you've got this stuff with Brandy Rose oh, and God. Awesome Kong. I don't understand what the point of any of that stuff is. It's just. It's a horrible mix of women who have no chemistry whatsoever. Yeah, I agree. Um, the other thing I was going to say was the uh, tag team division uh, is good, but it feels like we get the same matches every week. They've only, they've only got a certain amount of teams, and sometimes it's like, yeah, it's the same sort of teams versus each other every week, but some of them sometimes look slightly different. Like some of them are swapped out, but 
also, I think yeah, you know I, I mean. think the tag division also <laughs> needs to slow down. Yeah, well, the, it's like, too much. It is like they will also need to be there a lot of time, like making tags from inside the ring to each other, and like some from the apron. That's yeah, it's all to get thrown out the window. Just put on the, like a good match, it'll be fine. But it's like eh. that's the thing is, there's a lot of high spots in these tag matches. Now, don't get me wrong, it's fast and it's you know very very exciting, but you know it's it's too much. I think at times, you know. I, I'm all for the fast pace, but I also, you know, want to see traditional wrestling. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, full gear, you know, the tag match was very fast paced. And then Cody and Jericho, they gave us a very sort of, um, you know, traditional wrestling match, which I thought was great. Yeah. But um, I just, this, I, I know they're still finding their feet because they're a brand new company. So it's, it's, you know, we can't be too judgmental because they, they have to sort of bed themselves in. But, you know, they're a couple of months into TV now. Um, they, obviously, we've had a few pay-per-views across the year. And it still isn't clicking for me. I still don't care enough. Yeah, I know you feel. It's not, it still doesn't click for me. It's not. I still watch it every week, but it's not like I don't look forward to it. Like, I look forward to NXT every week. Yeah, I, I watch NXT and I'm excited from start to finish. I think it's great. Hmm. But... Um, Sean Spears versus Joey Janela uh, is not a match that I want to see. Yeah, Sean Spears, it doesn't do it for me at all. Like, I, I in, didn't care for Ty Dillinger. <laughs> I care even less for Sean Spears. Yeah, well, Ty Dillinger was a gimmick. He was like, the whole thing was just a gimmick. The gimmick got over uh, on NXT and then didn't get over on Moment Master. He just went away. Um, Ty Dillinger, or whatever his name is, Sean Spears, as a, burst, as a wrestler, just isn't great. He's just kind I just, of generic I just and don't, boring. I just don't like him as a personality. I just don't... <laughs> It just doesn't click with me. And I, I don't think Joey Janelle is that good either. I think he's okay. Yeah. But, you know, he's very much a, a spot specialist. I didn't want to, I was going to use the term spot monkey then, but I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. um, he's very much a spot specialist, you know? Um, and I just don't think he's that great. I think AW does have um, a good main event scene. Mm. Jericho, Omega, Moxley, um, Cody Rhodes. I think they're they're all really good. Yeah. Everybody else, I think, are just okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, oh, I, I like thought... um, I like Santana and Ortiz. Uh, and I, I, I do like the tag division. I think they've got great tag teams. I just want the matches to slow down a bit. They don't need to be spot fest from bell to bell. Yeah, I agree. We yeah. need some tag teams in there that are going to slow things, slow the pace down. Yeah, I agree. Um I don't know. Um, I like the tag division, but just like like just, I think there's enough teams. If that makes sense, because like I say every week we get the same sort of matches, like Private yeah. Party versus Lucha Bros and Lucha Bros versus um, whoever else SEU, SEU and then SEU versus Private yeah. Party, and he's kind of <laughs> so every, eventually going to win. They're going to win out combinations, and they're going to have to have the same match again. And but the like, problem is they all wrestle a very similar style as well. Yeah, yeah. So there is a lot of there's just not a lot of slow paced wrestling. I agree. It's all to make the crowd go, ooh, and ah, and all that sort of oh, stuff. There's yeah. no, you know, <laughs> I would love to see a fucking headlock takedown. <laughs> Just one. To be honest. I mean, I love a handspring elbow and all that sort of stuff as much as the next person. But sometimes I want to see... You know, just a bit of joint manipulation or something. You know. Yeah, the thing is, if you see your high spots like all the time, then they let them mean less when you when you see him. Because like, you just I agree, it. completely agree. Like the Canadian Destroyer, Britt Baker did a Canadian Destroyer on the pre-show in the middle of a match. Yeah, I'm but sorry, but you a... just take away. Um, I mean, I think you know, Canadian Destroyer is probably being used way too much now, anyway. Mm. But it's just a regular move. It's just basically an arm drag now. Yeah, so. But and I don't know. You just you're right. You, you take away. Um, the, the the specialness of a high spot if they're in every single match. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Like that's something that's another thing that NXT just does really well. It's like when you see a Canadian Destroyer, you see Adam Cole do a Canadian Destroyer, it looks awesome because like, whoa, you didn't want. You see an AEW, it's like you see like five a match. It's like every match has one. It's like okay, yeah, they're on the apron, they're in the middle of the ring, they're on the floor. You know, it's it's it's, it's too much, I think, and yeah. they need to figure it out. Uh, and I, I, you know, and I, I'm I have confidence that they will. But I just think at the minute, it's not gripping me. Um, it's not gripping me like I want it to. I want it, it to grip me. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I just, I mean, there's something, what didn't make sense to me on this week's AEW, and by all means, correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, I thought title matches were supposed to be based off rankings. 
Yeah. Cause, yeah so cause... why was Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara challenging for the AEW tag team titles? Exactly. It came out of nowhere. It's like, it's in the, yeah, didn't that, any to it. it's that just, was very it's much a WWE move to me. Yeah, very much so. Um, uh, so, I mean, because I'm 100% certain that Jericho and Guevara are not the number one contenders ranking-wise to the AEW tag team titles. Yeah, definitely not. So if um, wins and losses matter, then that match doesn't make any sense. No. If you're saying to me that wins and losses matter, they have to matter. They, they you, you can't just thrust people into title matches because that takes away the wins and losses matter thing it just it's just like well yeah you're the number one contenders but we're going to give these people a tag team title match so forget all the hard work you've put in to become number one contenders yeah it's a bit dumb isn't it um, uh, and I, I saw it and i was just i was like oh that doesn't make any sense why have rankings yeah you know? uh, but it did give us uh chris joker's first loss in aw which is something lost to a uh, Scorpio Sky of all people, which is fine. Maybe that means and Scorpio Sky is fine. I mean, he's one of the tag team champions, and so that's yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, but does that mean Scorpio Sky now is going to get a shot at the AW title? I, mean, I think they do it in tag team rankings, don't they? Shrug. Then you have an overall ranking. So Scorpio Sky put in Jericho. It was a tag match, wasn't it? It was SCU yeah. versus. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't wrong. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I think Scorpio Sky. Um, pinning Jericho is just another win for SCU but they of course aren't included in the rankings because they are the tag team champions my brain hurts <laughs> it's confusing and although they've brought the rankings out they haven't stuck to them with, with the tag division in that sense yeah it just feels a bit overly, overcomplicated it's like yeah. but it doesn't have to be and that's the thing like you've got your win loss record right so you have, the, you have your win loss record in the tag division and then you say, for example, if Scorpio Sky was to fight Jericho in a singles match, like he would have an overall record. Yeah. As well as, you know, a tag record, a singles record, and then you have an overall record. Right. Makes sense, I think. Uh, but, you know, so, yeah, Jericho's the champion, but him and Sammy Guevara aren't a tag team. Exactly. But then okay, so they've not won a match as a tag team. Yeah. Therefore, shouldn't even be in. In fact, let me pull up the rankings now. Um, <laughs> For AEW, give me just a second here. Yeah, the result ranking thing doesn't really do it for me. I don't, I don't get it. What's the it time? does for me, but I need it to be consistent. Yeah, true. If it isn't consistent, then it's it, there's no point in having. There's no point in having it there. Yeah, I was not a fan right. of the uh, the time limit thing. Like, but time time and time runs out. It just means like you don't get a finish of the match. To me, it's like oh well, that was pointless. Um, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> was I, don't, I don't mind it myself. Yeah. Right here we go. So. We'll start with the women's rankings. So, based on wins and losses, Britt Baker is the number one contender to the women's championship. Okay. Okay. Um, she's won three, lost one, and there's like tag matches over in there as well. So, she's 6-2 overall. Mm -hmm. But she's number one contender for the women's championship based on the rankings. Now, based on the rankings for the tag team division, the Lucha Bros um, are the number one contenders. Okay. Nowhere in there, not even in the top five, are Jericho and Sammy Guevara. <laughs> So you've got the Lucha Bros, then Proud and Powerful, which of course is Santana and Ortiz, not sure uh, about the name. Yeah. Young Bucks, Best Friends, Dark Order. Right. Okay. Singles rankings. Pac is the number one contender to the AEW Championship. Good. Cody Rhodes is second, but cannot have a shot at the championship. Yeah, he lost, yeah. So do you take him out of the rankings? I don't know. Maybe, I, right. I don't know. I guess if he was number one... The one just have to cancel him out and go to number two until I guess. Jericho loses it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, then you got Adam Page, John Moxley, and Darby Allen. Right, right. So, I, I, again, I don't understand why <laughs> um, Jericho and Sammy Guevara had a tag team title match. Yeah, yeah it seemed. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying these things to be facetious. I'm saying it because if wins and losses matter and. You know, they count towards you going towards the championship of, you know, that division. Then Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho shouldn't be fighting for the tag team titles. I'm just saying. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, Look, it's, as you said, it's a very WWE thing to do. Just throw them in there because... It, it just doesn't yeah. make any sense. That's the, that's the problem that I had with it. When I saw it come up at the beginning of Dynamite, um, I was like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> They're not the number one contenders. So, uh, you know what? If... if People have a different opinion on that to me. I'm happy to hear it. But I just think if wins and losses count, 
make sure you stick to that because if you don't, then you can scrap that ranking system already. <laughs> yeah, it's not working. Don't don't sort of pride yourself on having wins and losses if wins and losses don't count for anything and anybody can just fight for titles. Because it, it takes the prestige of the ranking system completely out. It, it just takes it away. Yeah, it's all being pointless. Yeah, it, it does seem completely pointless. And I don't know. I just, I didn't like that. And I just think that's... Um, one thing I didn't like about AEW this week. Uh, second thing, I still think JR is very much slipping down the the commentary ladder. Yeah. He, he called Full Gear Fully Loaded this week. <laughs> Oops. Fully Loaded hasn't been a pay-per-view in over 20 years. Yeah. But the last one, I think, was 1999. Oof. And Jericho called... Correct, I, I might be wrong uh, there, but um, I, I don't, they've not had Fully Loaded in, in at least 10 years. I, I, I'm trying to think what he said. He said something, uh, called something a WWE name rather than an AEW one. I can't remember what he said. Well, he called the, uh, like a Urinagi, he called it a rock bottom. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. He said, it's not. And, not you know, so somebody got a table yeah. out at full gear and he said, Devon, get the tables. <laughs> yeah. I get it. WWE You've guy. worked in WWE for so long, but people are coming to AEW to get away from WWE. Yeah. Um, I just don't think JR is the man for that job. I think JR personally would be better suited to being a commentator in NWA. Yeah, sure. That would suit him better. He's very old school, and I think that sort of old school would suit him. Tony Schiavone, uh, on the other hand, despite being away from the business for like 18 years, <laughs> uh, I still I think he's doing a great job. And you can tell that he's just having a fucking blast. <laughs> yeah, ca- great. Calling this, this new generation of wrestlers, whereas JR just cannot get out of that WWE mindset. And I think it's a real shame because I think JR is one of the best of all time. Hmm. Um, I'm not saying that he's not. And, you know, I would never sort of disrespect JR in that sense. I just think now he isn't what the AEW commentary booth needs. Yeah. Just give us Excalibur and Tony Schiavone. Uh, Excalibur is your play-by-play. Tony Schiavone is your colour. And that should be that that should be enough. JR, for me, just it, it isn't doing it for me at all. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, just does uh, JL doesn't suit the style that AEW is going for. I think that's that's what I was trying to get across. Yeah, yeah. that exactly. You put it you put it in better better context than I did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I agree. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, which and it's a real shame. I just I just don't think they found their groove yet at uh, AEW. Yeah, I think, yeah. Give them time because you know it's only still very new compared to you know every other uh, company out there. Um, but do you think they need to stop paying attention to what WWE are doing? Like every other week, they're making reference to WWE, saying, oh, that other company, blah, blah, blah. And they're saying stuff on Twitter, and Jericho's making fun of it. It's like, shut up. Don't, don't worry about what they're doing. Focus on yourself. Focus yeah. on making yourself a unique wrestling show. And you can, you, can, you can tell they're still bothered by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And but, but that's about- not the way. They think it's going to win over. I mean, there's a certain set of fans that absolutely love all of that. Oh, yeah. But for people who want to enjoy wrestling as a whole, they, uh, I don't think that's what they want to see. Yeah, exactly. Like everyone goes on about the ratings and things. It's like I said, well, yeah, of course AEW is going to going to have high ratings. They're new. This is the new exciting thing. I think eventually mm-hmm. we'll see that they'll go down and they'll talk, level out, and then see AEW at the same. I mean, it's getting there. Yeah. I mean, I think AEW's um, was you know pay per view fallout this week, and that's why their ratings were higher than NXT. Um, I, I do think it will level out eventually. I mean, yeah. there's there's wrestling for everybody there. Is that uh, my per- I'm just personally um, not fully feeling AEW yet. I don't care enough. Uh, I enjoy it. I do, and I watch it every week. Um, and, you know, I just want it to get better. I just think yeah, at the yeah. minute there are things that are good and there are things that just don't work at all. Um, and I just I hope they, you know, they get smoothed out over time, and I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah, me too. As, as I say, I'm still going to watch it every week. Um, but yeah, just, just, yeah, exactly. I just wanted to, wanted to be good. Yeah, I want, all to, I want all wrestling mm-hmm. to be good. Yeah, exactly. I want them to shy away from the WWE digging because mm-hmm. they don't need to do it. Um, we know that they all worked there. We know that Jericho worked there. We know Cody Rhodes worked there. Um, I think they need to take JR out of the equation somehow. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, over time, I think it will level itself out. But at the minute, I just don't know. Yeah, I agree. Another interesting thing, I noticed they called Cody Rhodes Cody Rhodes this week, which I, oh, they, did they? I didn't think they could do because I thought WWE owned, owned the Rhodes, Cody Rhodes' name. Yeah. Uh, which is bizarre to me because it's his actual name. 
Yeah, well, I think his real name's like Cody Cody Reynolds. Cody Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Brandy Rhodes, you've got to have Brandy Rhodes. And the way they got around it before was when they introduced them both together, they would say Cody and Brandy Rhodes. It sounded like the same. It's quite clever to be fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but now they're saying, now they're calling Cody Rhodes, it's like MJF called them that and Jericho called them that. It's like, oh, so can they say that now? Or they just, just been, I don't know, who knows? Yeah. Um, whether WWE would go after them for, for, for doing that, I don't know. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt they care. I, I would be surprised, but oh well. <laughs> Um, I want to talk to you about something that um, I mean, I'm quite interested in at the minute, and that is the situation with Jordan Miles. I don't know if you've been paying attention to it or not. Yeah, I think this might be one of the biggest overreactions in wrestling history, personally. Yeah, me too. <laughs> now, full disclaimer here, but we're not, you know, we're not, we're not being racist or anything like that when we not. talk about this. Yeah, and what that t shirt was. That teacher was poorly thought out, and it had it should have been taken down, which it was. Um, however, it was clearly wasn't intended that way. I don't think. And at the end of the day, See, was... I don't. I don't think it was either. Now, um, if I mean, I, me, me and Viz were tweeting about this the other day when we basically came to the agreement: if that T-shirt was put out in any other color, you don't hear anything about it. Yeah. If that smiley Jordan Miles logo was on a blue T-shirt. Nothing said. Yeah. Nothing at all. And he's still on TV and he's still getting the mega push that they had planned for. Yeah, it's it's so weird because he's doing, he's, at, he's, you know, getting a big push in NXT. And yeah, his excuse was when he first saw it, he was on a white t shirt, which kind of proves your point. And so he okayed it. And then he saw it on a black t shirt and he's like, that's racist. But I don't know. But I'd, I'd, I'd imagine the person who designed it designed it on a white background. So didn't even think. Like, it could have that negative conversation to it. It's just, so, it's just a, it's a logo slapped on a t-shirt. All of those <laughs> NXT t-shirts that were designed at the same time were all absolutely terrible. Oh yeah, garbage in their own way. Yeah, but yeah, um, he's, he's gone completely nuts with it, and it's like on Twitter saying, "I quit," blah blah blah. That's you know, race. Don't call me by Jordan Mars anymore. That's a racist name. Blah blah. blah. Racist companies. Just calm down. Kevin Kingston was just NXT, the WWE champion for like a few months. But clearly, they're not <laughs> as racist as you think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even like Booker T has, yeah, has Booker you know, said, said called called him out on it, and he's like, "Look, you know, I've had to put up with crap over the years, and um, you deal with it in a better way." Yeah, it's... he's he's gone about it now. Where I mean, he called, he said that you know, he put that video out, and he was like, "WWE don't care about." Is they're literally the words that he used on a video that had since been deleted. Uh, just like the one he deleted the other day when he said that he wasn't going to work for racists and <laughs> that he quits. Yeah, I mean, you, I just, just, you just signed a five-year better way. Yeah, you just signed a five-year deal on like a contract. It's like you can't like have fun being sued. I guess uh, <laughs> like you can't just. I don't know. Well, he, he won't be able to. WWE haven't come out and said that they've released him. They haven't said that he's, uh, um, you know, been re- you know anything like that. They've been fired or anything. You can't just quit. No. It's it's a weird situation and yeah, it's a massive overreaction. I feel like it's doing it for attention. It's like, look, look, they they were doing a racist. Look at me, I'm I'm the one standing up for everyone and black people. Am I right, guys? Got guys, am I right? Yeah, and so. I think a lot of people have turned on him because of this. I mean, yeah. you've, you've got a couple of the troublemakers that the independent scene has. I'm not going to name names, <laughs> um, but there, you know there are a couple of of troublemakers out there that jumped uh, have jumped on this mm. in support of him and you know they're now calling wwe racist and the t-shirt completely racist and all that sort of stuff yeah. and i think people need to be careful when using that type of language because um i mean it, at the end of the day that's slander yeah it's yeah um, it, it's slander it, it, i mean you know you're openly calling somebody racist yeah and trying, I mean, it, it that is it's a harsh term anyway. It's just a harsh word. Um, I mean that in the in the way that the word itself sounds, not the meaning behind the word. Right. Um, it's like like the word and excuse the use of this on the podcast, but cunt. <laughs> right. 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 It's a harsh word. It sounds harsh. It is. But to you know, I don't think the t-shirt itself is racist. Um. I think, like I said, I mean, it's okay. Let me use that in a different way. I don't think the logo itself is racist. No, on on the black t shirt, yeah, it looks a bit dodgy. 
and yeah, oh. it should have been taken down. Uh, th- there's no denying that. The, on the on the black T-shirt, yeah, it looks all. It looks like what they said it looks like. But on another coloured T-shirt, I I think that's just uh, a logo of depicting Jordan Miles smiling. Yeah, like uh, I just think the way he's gone about it and the way that he's now portrayed himself. I think, you know, he's he's just he's done it in a terrible way. Like called out WWE, called them racist and he, yeah. I just I think he's he's done it in a very terrible way. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's very bizarre. And like uh, I don't know. It it is is messing himself up for the future now. Like he could have been this big huge star, they're pushing him to the moon and now they just completely ruined it and yeah, he's an idiot. <laughs> in my opinion no I, I think he's an idiot as well i mean it's it's one of those things that you you know you're too scared to talk about because you know there are people that are going to stick by him no matter what yeah and anybody that speaks against him they're racist <laughs> oh, yeah, but it isn't about being racist it's about the way you've gone about it you know it's yeah okay the the logo on the t- on the black t-shirt looks it looks horrendous fair enough but deal with it internally yeah don't go nuts over it on twitter because now, now there's all this stuff of they don't know who agreed to it. So there's there's finger pointing, but no certainty. There's, there's no, oh, yeah, Jordan Mars agreed to it. Um, and Triple H was pushing for it. But Triple H uh, and all this. There's, there's, there's a lot of finger pointing going on. But nobody, nobody's actually, there's no, like, facts coming out of anywhere. WWE haven't acknowledged it. Yeah. Not properly, anyway. I mean, they, they released that statement, you know, loosely addressing it yeah it's saying like the, the t-shirt was taken down um as soon as they were made aware of it and, yeah. but have have they um you know <laughs> has anybody come out and said to jordan miles face to face um jordan what we're gonna do is we what we know that you know you know that you're black and he's gone <laughs> yeah yeah i know uh i see it every day um <laughs> You remember that thing back in the day, um, you know, the, the gollywog thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was fucking awful. And WWE going, yeah, yeah. Um, but we want to make a T-shirt of that <laughs> and put you know put your name on it. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh wait, no, that's racist. They've, they've not <laughs> done that. <laughs> no, yeah, it's uh. complete fucking accident. All wrestling T-shirts are black. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Like you because see that, us yeah. wrestling fans are fat and we want to hide the fact that we're <laughs> fat and we wear black to do that. This is, this, hey, wait, Just oh. because your logo <laughs> looks like that doesn't mean that it's fucking racist. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's a horrible situation made more horrible by the horrendous overreaction to it. And that's what makes it look racist, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. He's made it look more racist than it actually is. Yeah, I agree. If, if anyone's made it look racist, it's him. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even if it's gone to WWE, like, we just called, like, whoever's in charge of uh, the, like, T-shirts and things. And called him, like, yeah, can you change that Lego? It looks a bit, looks a bit dodgy. And I'm like, oh yeah, of course, yeah, we'll change that. That's all he had to do. <laughs> That's it. He didn't have to go on Twitter and explode over it. It's like, come on. You could you could have been... Yeah, uh, all he had to do is go, um, look, um, I don't know if you've realised this, but on the black T-shirt, that logo looks kind of bad and then someone in the design department would have gone oh yeah okay fair enough we'll change the logo and they did change the logo yeah that's but what they had to do even after they changed the logo he then brought it back up <laughs> yeah, so there was something else happened backstage or something happened within the company that nobody is saying to make him have this meltdown to bring it back up after he after it was addressed taken down the new design was put up and then he resurfaced the old design yeah, like no one would have noticed. Nobody would even bat an eye at it because no one would notice or care. Who's buying a Jordan Miles T-shirt for fuck's sake? <laughs> exactly. Who? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, him. I'm not. His I boy. wasn't going to buy one. I didn't even want him to win the breakout tournament. I was um, a Cameron Grimes all the way. Yeah. It's, it's so stupid. But now I'm racist because I wanted the, the redneck to be the black guy, <laughs> I guess. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know, a bit... It's, it's, any way you can spin it any way to make it look that way i just, I just think it's ridiculous it's um I agree. long and short of it ridiculous fucking stupid yep i agree dumb cool but and guys <laughs> you know if you have another opinion on this and you think we're wrong for saying what we've said then fine call us out on it and we'll 
you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion on it. That's that's ours. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But, yeah, yeah, it's a weird situation. But, uh, something yeah. that's been just approached the wrong way. Yeah, massive overreaction. So I look forward to. I saw him. Uh, he tweeted yesterday. He's now changed his Twitter handle to what his name was before, which was ACH, and yeah, yeah. Uh, put writing out a list of uh, wrestlers that he wants to wrestle. I just felt like I felt like tweeting him and going, "Well, good luck wrestling them in five years." Yeah, good luck. <laughs> you signed your deal, and WWE aren't going to release you anywhere. Yes, I found. I think big, I think big companies would be would be scared to hire him. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't think AEW would touch him with a barge pole. No, no, I don't think this be scared of him in case I say something mildly I don't know not racist but he would take it in the racist way somehow yeah that's it <laughs> I mean if he spun this the way that he has to make it make WWE look like uh, the Ku Klux Klan <laughs> then you know who, who's saying he wouldn't do it somewhere else yeah. and I think I think he would if he wants to be released I think he'd pr- uh, probably be on the indies for the remainder of his career not that I'm, you know there's nothing wrong with the independence of course but um, I think his time on the big stage is probably done yeah, I agree. For something that could have been handled a lot better. It's, yeah, it's it's it blo- he's like, yeah. I don't know. As I say, it was him. He brought the whole thing up. It's like nobody would have noticed if he just uh, literally nobody. Yeah, so dumb. Nobody's gone on there and bought a Jordan Mars T-shirt. No it's, one. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Even the redesign. I imagine they've sold zero T-shirts. Especially now, all this has happened. Yeah. People have sent them back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Ah uh, well. Well, what if anyone bought that T-shirt and is just wearing it out? <laughs> yeah, the original one, yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, buy him. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, podcast. <laughs> Anything else yeah. we, need we need to wrap? No. No, that was him. <laughs> cool. Um, we are going to start kids. streaming again. Um, I'm going to do a playthrough of Resident Evil 5, I think. Nice. Uh, Finn's going to play... What are you going to play again? Yakuza 0. That, yeah. And more Finn's the Yakuza Zero. Yes. So look out for new stuff on our Twitch channel. And uh, also, 1310 Apparel have given us a discount code. Oh, yes. So if you want to go and buy cool t shirts or hoodies or snapbacks, um, you can get 10% off using the code Games and Graps at the checkout. What's you get snap- 10% off your full order. What's a snapback? It's a baseball cap. Oh. When does it call it a baseball cap? Because it's called a snapback. But they're not, they're called baseball caps. Fucking hell. <laughs> I've never heard that be called snapback before. That's the first time I've ever heard that You've word. You've never heard it called a snapback? No. Who? Why? Who calls it that? It's, it's cap. Everyone, type the word snapback into the internet and see what comes up. <laughs> well, it's type baseball cap into the internet. Let's call it a cap. It's easy. He even knows what a cap is. It's a hat. It's just the, it's the, the style of the baseball cap. It's a snapback. <laughs> of course it is. I'll take you over it. You should have just agreed and made stuff look slightly cooler. <laughs> no, no one believes that I'm cool. No one. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Fucking hell. Oh dear. <laughs> anyway, this has been episode 105 of the Games and Cast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts every single Saturday, probably, across yes. podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And youtube.com forward slash games and graps and on Facebook in video form. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but for now thank you very much for listening we'll be back next week Uh, share the podcast share everything that we put on because um, we need your help to grow basically yes please retweet all that good stuff yeah I'm Sonny I'm Finn and we'll see you next time take it easy guys goodbye thanks so much goodbye snap back